forage testing. Understanding the quality of the forage that you have available is important to predict animal performance and to plan your supplemental feeding strategies. That's what we're going to talk about today. Now one of the first things that we have to remember is that forage quality is highly variable. It fluctuates by the seasons, soil types, and plant species. You can see in this graph here, we've got native grasses and B. gracilis, which is blue grama, and Pascopyrum smithii, and then non-native grasses like crested wheatgrass or Agropyron cristatum. And you can see different species have greater crude protein at different times of the year. One of the biggest drivers of forage quality is the time of year and the plant growth stage. A general rule of thumb to remember is plant maturity is the enemy of forage quality. Or as plants mature, their quality declines. In this example, as plants get older, their lignin content goes up, which makes their digestibility go down. Another thing to remember is that animal intake is largely driven by the digestibility of the forage. As digestibility decreases, so does the amount that an animal is able to intake because it's taking longer in the rumen to break down and process and pass. Now one great thing about testing forage is you can really do this sampling without needing help, guidance, or specialized equipment. Now there's really two scenarios where we might sample forage. First would be in the pasture, and second would be sampling from harvested forages such as bales. When sampling from a pasture, you can just use scissors and you can cut plants close to the surface of the ground. You can be selective here and sort samples by different species or by current year's growth as opposed to last year's growth. You can also just composite all the species together or all the growth types together and get a snapshot of what forage quality is available. Now when sampling harvested forages such as bales, a bale corer can help to sample the bale more uniformly. And you can run those on a cordless drill or a manual hand drill setup. And oftentimes our extension educators have those for loan. If you don't have one, you can still get this done. Make sure you dig deeper into the bale because that outer crust is exposed to the weather and might be of lower quality. Once you collect your samples, it's important to not let those samples mold, especially if you're sampling green grass. And we suggest putting those samples into paper sacks and just letting them air dry for a couple of days before you package them up and ship them out. Now once you've collected your samples, you can ship those to public or private labs. A public lab right here in Laramie is the Wyoming Department of Agriculture's Analytical Services Lab. Now we're not endorsing any particular lab in this situation, but we want you to know that there are options out there. A private lab that we've used is Ward Labs over in Kearney, Nebraska. And right now, both Ward Labs and the Wyoming Department of Agriculture Lab are both open for business. So you can ship your samples there and do business as usual with these public and private labs. Now this is an example of the type of results you might get from a lab. Now let's talk about a few of the important forage quality metrics that you will get information about in such a report. Most folks are really interested in crude protein. The majority of labs actually first measure the nitrogen content and then estimate crude protein based on that value. Now you can use the crude protein information to understand if your forage is meeting your animal's requirements. A good rule of thumb to remember is dry cows need about 7% crude protein, growing heifers 10% crude protein, and lactating cows 12% crude protein. TDN, or total digestible nutrients, is a reflection of energy. Generally, if you have plenty of grass, then you may not be energy limited because the amount of forage available often reflects the amount of energy available. Now, intake in that situation can become the greater limitation and enhancing digestibility with a protein supplement would be important. There are many indicators of digestibility, including lignin, acid detergent fiber, neutral detergent fiber, and then in vitro dry matter digestibility. Now I personally like the in vitro dry matter digestibility because it's really a simulation of what would be happening in the rumen of a cow and it's easy to interpret because higher numbers are better. 
Some specific minerals that you might be interested in might include macro minerals that are needed in large amounts like calcium, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, and magnesium, or micro minerals that are needed in small amounts like iron, copper, selenium, and zinc. If you suspect a deficiency in any one of those, you should double check that your forage analysis package is going to test for it. Now vitamins are critical for normal animal body function and not all vitamins are included in all analyses. So if you're concerned about a specific one, you may have to request it. Remember fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K are stored in the body, but water soluble vitamins like C and B complex are not. Also, remember that vitamin A is obtained from green plant material. So if you've been feeding dormant grass hay for more than four months, you may have a problem here. Thanks for listening today. We hope you found this information to be useful. If you have ideas or questions about topics that you think we could provide more information on at this time, feel free to email us and you'll see our emails coming up next. We hope everyone's staying safe during this time and we hope your spring is off to a good start.